Mohammed's followers sometimes claim to adhere to a faith of Abraham as if Abraham founded a religion. Yet most haven't bothered to learn about Abraham other than through Islamic tradition that was all created and put to the pen in the 7th and 8th centuries AD that poses as thousands of years of prior historical record. Muslims would simply read about Abraham as detailed in the actual historical record, it might clear up one of their most difficult misconceptions regarding the gospel of Jesus Christ, specifically their inability to understand that God manifest or revealed himself in the person of Jesus Christ. Muhammad's followers deny this even though they believe that Mary conceived Jesus solely by the direct will of God. Muslims will also claim that all God would have to do is say be and he could reveal himself in any manner that he so chose. So let's look at the first time that Yahweh revealed himself in the flesh of a man to Abraham in Genesis chapter 18. And the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre, the Lord, Yehovah, the existing one. Lord, translated from the Hebrew, Jehovah, the existing one, that is, God himself appeared to Abraham. Before the Jews surrendered to a much later doctrine in which men declared that the name Yahweh was too sacred to say or write, the Tetragrammaton YHWH occurred in this spot and in 6827 other places in Hebrew scripture. Yahweh is the name of God. And he lift up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. Enoshe, man, mortal man, person, of an individual, men in the collective sense. So Abraham bowed himself toward the ground and said, My Lord, or Adonai. The title spoken in place of Yahweh in Jewish display of reverence. As in the prior case with the name Jehovah substituting for Yahweh, the substitute title Adonai is used in this spot. It can mean Lord or lowercase Lord as in Master. Whether Yahweh or Adonai occurred in the original Hebrew is a moot point considering the context. And he said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee from thy servant. Some suggest that the man in our passage was an angel, but are we to believe that Abraham thought himself a servant of an angel rather than Yahweh, particularly considered all the direct contact Abraham had with Yahweh? Abraham continues, Let a little water, I pray you, be fetched, and wash your feet, and rest yourselves under the tree, and I will fetch a morsel of bread. And they said, So do as thou hast said. Water is not only fetched so these men can wash their feet, but Abraham offers the men food and they accept. And he took butter and milk and the calf which he had dressed and set it before them, and they did eat. And so these men, one unquestionably being Yahweh himself, did eat. Later in the passage we read, And the men went toward Sodom. But Abraham stood yet before the Lord, and Abraham drew near and said, Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? So who has the power to destroy a city of men? Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? Who was the man that Abraham recognized as God that is the judge of all the earth, the same one that died? And the Lord said, If I find in Sodom fifty righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sakes. Who had the power and authority to spare Sodom? The answer is again obvious. Abraham did not see God, but Abraham did have a face-to-face -face meeting with Yahweh as he manifest or revealed himself in the flesh of a man. Christians that recognize the coexistence of Yahweh and his Messiah Yeshua is further confirmed through these Christophanies or appearances of Jesus Christ in the Old Testament understand that this man that Abraham met that had the power to destroy Sodom was Yeshua the Messiah Jesus Christ for there is one God and one mediator between God and men 
the man, Christ Jesus. Mankind's one mediator and advocate from the foundation of the world. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world, but now once in the end of the world he hath appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. That sacrifice, just as prophesied in the Old Testament so many hundreds of years before crucifixion was even invented. For dogs hath compassed me, the assembly of the wicked hath enclosed me, they pierced my hands and my feet, they part my garments among them, and cast lots upon my vesture, detailed just as it was fulfilled. Next, let's consider the Hebrew term translated as angel, as used four chapters later. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven. Whether in the Old Testament or New, angels are messengers. Malach, messenger, representative. Now look at the verse again and notice the article, the, before angel, indicating a very unique and specific messenger checking the Strong's definition again, we find the Theophanic angel. And the term the angel of the Lord is used in the Old Testament is generally understood by Christians to be a Christophany, or appearance of Yeshua. Though not the only indicator of a Christophany, this phrase occurs 58 times in the King James Version. You can Google the term Christophany or the phrase the angel of the Lord or the Theophanic angel to learn more. Let's look at another spot when Yahweh, Yeshua, revealed himself this time to Moses. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. God called unto him out of the midst of the bush. The angel of the Lord and God are described as being in the midst of the bush. God, Elohim. Used 2,346 times, Elohim is a Hebrew term used as a replacement substitute for the name of God, Yahweh, that springs from that same era of latter doctrine. Elohim can mean the God, and also a God as in a pagan god or goddess, or even an earthly judge, depending on context. We certainly don't have to wonder which in the context of this passage. I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. All references translated as God in these two verses also use the substitute title Elohim in the Hebrew. The angel and Yahweh, both appearing in the midst of that bush, are one, just as Jesus declared in the gospel. I and my father are one. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. The Jews wanted to stone Jesus for the blasphemy of declaring that he and God are one and the same. That one in the Koine Greek is in the neuter gender indicating that they are of one essence. Thus the Messiah, Yahshua, Jesus Christ, is God. God is the Messiah. The Theophanic angel is of the Lord, just as the Spirit of God is of the Lord. All God. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. In the beginning was a Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were made by Him. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of the angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Regarding the judge of the earth mentioned in Genesis 18, Jesus Christ declared, For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. The Messiah is the way God chose to lead his people to him 
during this new covenant era that the Messiah ushered in. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Old covenant or new, the mediator of mankind from the foundation of the world. The Hebrew name of the Messiah, Yeshua, means Yahweh saves or delivers or rescues. What does mankind need rescue from before a just God more than our own sin? Under the old covenant, it was the blood of temple sacrifice of animals that provided atonement for sin. Under the new covenant, it is the blood of the Messiah, the Lamb of God, the one sacrifice for all that saves us from sin. The temple is no more nor will it be. For this is my blood of the New Testament which is shed for many for the remission of sins. After the Messiah, Yeshua, Jesus Christ, was crucified, died, and resurrected, he appeared before hundreds of witnesses in his glorified body. And just before his ascension into heaven, Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Deny this at your own peril. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. To our Muslim friends, are you ready to stand before Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, in judgment, the very Son you reject? He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. The born-again body of Christ is not an exclusive club. All are welcome. The Lord is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. A far cry from Muhammad's alter ego, Allah, that predestines people before they are even conceived for his personal torturing pleasure that he called entertainment in the hell of Muhammad's imagination. Allah's messenger was called to lead the funeral prayer of a child of the Ansar. Aisha said, Allah's messenger, there is happiness for this child, for it committed no sin. Muhammad said, It may be otherwise, because God created for hell those who are to go to hell. He created them for hell while they were yet in their father's loins. What kind of evil God predestines people from before conception for his personal torture and torment? A counterfeit God. To our Muslim friends, will you continue to reject the new covenant salvation offered to you by the Messiah, Jesus Christ, to instead follow in the 7th and 8th century created historical fiction of Muhammad and his followers? Will you continue to prostrate yourself toward the pagan, courageous Kaaba and the Blackstone idol in Mecca that wasn't even established until the 5th century AD, 1,200 kilometers away from the holy land of the prophets and patriarchs? Will you continue to reject the sinless Lamb of God, the Prince of Peace, to follow a single 7th century individual who Islam's own books reveal as a murdering, prisoner-abusing thief? The hour is late. You could die this very day. Why not seek out the love of the one true God by inviting Jesus Christ to come into your heart, as so many of your former Muslim brothers and sisters have? Find the joy that comes from a new heart and new spirit, just as the Old Testament saints prophesied of the new covenant so many hundreds of years in advance. And I will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit within you, and I will take the stony heart out, and will give them an heart of flesh. Jesus has been waiting for you. All you have to do is humble yourself and ask with a contrite spirit. For every one that asketh, receiveth, and he that seeketh, findeth, and to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Please visit the first link below for a discussion on this subject in the Islam Christian Forum. Second link for the website text version that contains links to searches into the scriptures cited to study them in context. Third link for the history of Mecca. Fourth link for introduction to the gospel fifth link for testimonies of former Muslims that have come to know the love of the one true God through Jesus Christ. To understand the role of Islam in Bible prophecy, please visit BeholdTheBeast.com. Please also visit HistoryOfMecca.com.